problem? Yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook when my DJ revolves it. Ice, ice, baby. You know it. Come on. Ice, ice, baby. Go ninja, go ninja. All right, welcome back. The uh, last, second and last section of Unit 13, really short chapter. Um, today we're going to talk about polar coordinates. Sounds really cool, right? But if just kidding, it's not too bad. But we are going to discuss some things that think they're cool, but really are not. All right. So uh, one of those things was vanilla ice. That was like the biggest guy ever back in the day. Uh, I remember listening to him when I was in middle school. Those were the days. All right. So let's talk a little bit about polar coordinates. And uh, before we talk about polar coordinates, let's talk about rectangle co coordinates. You know what rectangle coordinates are. So, for example, if I have the point negative 2, 3, you know I go over 2 units to the left and up 1, 2, 3. And the reason these are called rectangular uh, coordinates, I go over, I uh, look, and it forms a rectangle. That's, that's great, right? I mean, we get it. It's the same. We've been doing these for years. No problem with that. Rectangular coordinates, you know what this is. It's what you always are aware of. Okay, but now we've we've also come a long way and we have learned some other things. And so we're going to talk about these polar coordinates. And what we're going to talk about is we're going to have a uh, radius, a certain length, and we're going to start at the origin. That's going to be our pole. All right. And we can move this radius a certain number of degrees. Maybe I moved it right there. And then I would know that this point here is this so many degrees, this would be theta, and this is how far it is, that's my radius out to that point, all right? Now, we could talk about this in degrees, we could talk about it in radians, and we'll do both, all right? But the great thing about polar coordinates is it relates a lot to what we've already been doing in math the last several chapters. It relates to that all that trick stuff that we've been doing, right? We could even come over here and we could find this um, comma two comma three. I rotated here, and then it would come all the way to here. So that would be the coordinate. This whole big angle here. Remember, I always start at zero degrees, right, or zero uh, pi. So then I that's my um, degrees I would have, and I would have my radius. Okay, something pretty cool about polar coordinates. Um, let me show you here what is kind of cool about polar coordinates. Well, maybe you don't think it's cool, but I kind of think it's cool. So in rectangular coordinates, there's only one way I can label this point. It is negative 2 over on the x and 3 up on the y. It's the only possible way I can get to that coordinate. But let's say I have a point here. Let's say I have this point right here, okay? And we want to describe this. There's a lot of ways we could describe this, right? I come over here. I have my radius. I rotate it all the way over. And it goes right there. And so that would be one way I could describe that. Maybe that's, let's see, 180. Maybe that is, I don't know, 220 degrees. Who knows, okay? That's one way to describe it, and then we don't know how big the radius is, we'll call it R though. That's one way to completely describe that. Not a problem at all. We totally get that, totally used to that, all right? Another way though, that what's great about polar coordinates is look, I could go this way. I could move my radius the negative, right? So instead of going a positive 220 degrees, I could go opposite that. I could go backwards from 360 and subtract. I actually went a negative 140 degrees, and then I went the radius. I mean, that's pretty cool that you can label this point a number of different ways. And if you think about it, I could rotate it 360 more degrees and have a new direction. So I could do 360 plus 220. That would give me 580 degrees and R. That would take me to the exact same spot. See, I, I would have my radius, I'd come out, there's once, and boom, it gets me right there. You can see I could go negative 360 and then negative 140 and it would get me there. 
Here's one that's kind of strange, but it totally works as well with polar coordinates. See right now, this doesn't look like it's going anywhere, does it? This angle right here, all right, all I know right now about this angle right here is that it is on a straight line. It's 180 degrees less um, than my 220, right? So I could find this angle pretty easily. That's, um, excuse me, uh, 220 minus 180. So that's going to be like 40 degrees right here, right? So now, but the radius goes the complete opposite direction. So if I wanted it, if I wanted to talk about this point over here, if I went 40 degrees, I'd have to do the opposite of this radius. I'd have to do the negative r. So I could do 40 degrees and then negative the radius length. All right, pretty cool, um, pretty cool stuff. Let's take a closer look at that. So let's do some polar coordinates with radians. Now, first of all, let's take a look at this. All right, we have our like unit circle on here, but it's not a unit circle because we have one, two, three, four, five. We have different lengths for our radius, but we also have listed on here some pretty obvious values that we know know about. Okay, all right. So let's take a look here. Let's do the first one. I want to go four, a radius of four, and pi over four. So pi over four is right here. So I'm going to start at zero. I go to pi over four, and I want to go out four. So that'd be one, two, three, four. So that point right there, we'll label that as point A. That is 4 pi over 4, all right? Let's do another one, 2 pi over 3. So I want to go all the way to 2 pi over 3, and then I want to go out 2. So this is 1, 2, we'll call that point B. Oh, let's try this one, pi over 6, negative 3. So pi over 6 is right here, and it says negative 3. So instead of going pi over 6, I want to go 180 to that, all right? through there, right? And so I'm on this one, now I'm going three, negative one, two, three. So instead of going here, I went here, but I didn't want the three on this one, I wanted the opposite of that. So I went out here, so that is my C value. All right, that's kind of tricky, okay? But you wanna go 180 degrees, so if I'm at pi over six, 180 in radians is pi, so add pi to that, and that's seven pi over six, right? All right, so let's take a look at this one. Ooh, we have negative one and negative five pi over six. Okay, so negative five pi over six. Instead of going the normal counterclockwise direction, I'm going negative, so I have to go negative five pi over six. Now here's a great trick. I look this way. To go five pi over six, I would go here. So I need to go the same distance, the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go to seven pi over six, because seven pi, over 6 is the same thing as negative 5 pi over 6, okay? So I'm going to 7 pi over 6, and I want to go negative 1. So I don't want to be here. I want to be on negative. I want to go the opposite way, 1, so it's right there. It seems ridiculous to do negatives and a negatives of both. I totally understand that, but it's nice that we can talk about things like that, all right? Now let's try it with some uh, degrees. Everybody loves degrees, so we have 6 and 120, so I want to go 120 degrees, and then I want to go out, out 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so we'll label that point E. Let's try this one, negative 3, 315. So I'm going all the way around to 315. I want to go negative of that, negative 3. So 315 is going to match up with what? 135. So I want to go 1, 2, 3 away from that. 1, 2, 3. Oh, I missed it. One hole off. 1, 2, 3. All right. Over here now we have 5, negative 120. So I'm going backwards 120, right? Backwards 120 is going to get me to 240. And I want to go five out. So one, two, three, four, five. That'll give me point G. Let's do point H. So I'm going to go negative 45. So I'm going to 315 because that's 45 degrees from 360. And I'm going to go negative seven. So now that's going to take me to the opposite side. I'm on 135. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
So I counted wrong on that one, didn't I? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this should have been E, and this is H. Okay? So there we have just some easy um, plotting of points in polar coordinates. All right, so now we're going to rename the points two different ways. So let's first plot our point, 120 degrees. So I got here, and then I'm going up six. So this is one, two, three, four, five. There's six. All right. So I need to call this two different ways. I'm going to do the negative. So let's do first the negative of 120. So if I go the opposite, so if I go 120 this way, I want to go negative this way, and I'm going 180 and then 60 more. So 180 and 60 more is 240. So I'm going negative 240 because I'm going the opposite direction. All right. And then I would have a radius of 6. Okay. Now let's do it so that I have the opposite radius. Let's do negative 6. So I'm right here at 120. I need to go the opposite of that on this side. So the opposite that matches up with, if I had 6 on this, it would be 300. So if I went to 300 degrees, boom, and then I went negative from here, so I went opposite of that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that would get me to that point right there. All right, so the first thing let's do on this one, let's plot it. So we got to go negative 5, 6. So we're going this way, 5, 6. That's to here. And negative 1, so that's the opposite way. Um, so we're going here to 1, 6. So, and it, 1 would be right here. That's a pretty tough one to see, isn't it? All right, so it's right there. So now um, let's, let's do the obvious one. The obvious one is going to go pi over 6. Right, so the obvious one is 1 and pi over 6. Um, that would be the opposite of that. That would take care of that. Uh, let's see, what else could we do? We could do all the way around um, negative. So let's go negative 11 pi over 6 and positive 1. That would also take care of it. You could also go, uh, if we want to keep this negative 1, so we know we're going this way, so we could go to positive 7 pi over 6, and then negative 1, that would get us to the same point. So there's a, a great many ways you could actually get those two, okay? All right, here's another thing that people think are cool, but is really not. The straight bill hat. Oh, my God, I cannot stand the straight bill hat. And uh, Mr. Brust has one of these, so I call him, you know, SBB, Straight Bill Brust. He, I mean, talk about making that guy even less cool, right? All right, so um, let's go. Let's talk about how we can convert between the two. Because right here, I can agree that I could have an X and a Y and label that point as rectangular. Or I could find out that this is my a certain degree theta, and then this is my radius, right? And then that would tell me where I'm at in terms of polar. So I can go from one to the other. But we, we need a, 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 some direction to help us with that. All right. So if I want to go from polar coordinates, so say I have a theta and I have an r, and we want to find x. Well, let's see what we need to do. All right. To find x, so we know x is this right here. And likewise, we know this is y. So let's take a look. What is the relationship we have here with x? Well, x is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I could do the cosine of theta equals the adjacent over my radius. Now, if you don't remember this formula, you don't need to. This is just cosine. What did I do to get this formula? I just multiplied by r, and now I have it. To find x, I multiply my radius times my cosine of whatever the theta is. Now you need to be careful because we're going to switch between radians and degrees a lot. You need to make sure you know what your calculator mode is in. All right. Over here, let's find y. This is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be sine theta equals opposite y over the radius. And again, how did I get this right here? I just multiplied both sides by r, okay? So to find my x-coordinate, I do r cosine theta. To find my y, I do r sine theta, the radius times the cosine or the sine. And most of the times, we're going to want to uh, round these to two or three decimals. I'll let you know. 
all right? But you don't want to just round it to 2. If it's 2.012, you don't want to round it to just 2. We need to be as close as we can on these, all right? All right, now let's take a look here, and how can we go from rectangular to polar? So if I know this is the point x and y, how can I find what else I have? All right, let's take a look here. I know this is my x, I know this is my y, maybe I know this is 2, and I know this is 4. All right, if I want to find my radius... Well, if I have two sides of any right triangle, it's simple Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. All right? x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And that will solve it so we can find r radius. So obviously you're going to have to take a square root there at the end to get that. How can I find my theta if I know opposite, I know opposite, and I know adjacent. How can I find that? That's going to be tangent of theta will give me y over x. Now, here's what I want to tell you. When we're converting from rectangular to polar, most of the time I'm going to tell you just use degrees, okay? Up here, I may give you polar and radians, and I want you to convert it to rectangular. No problem. But when we go to polar, just use degrees. And the reason being is what this is going to give you right here is a reference angle, okay? This is going to give you a reference angle. So let's be perfectly honest here and say a couple of things. If I know that I give you the point negative 2, 4. Now, I don't know what um, this r is. I don't know what theta is. I'm just giving you this real quick. When I put in tangent of theta in here, I am going to get a negative tangent. I'm going to get negative, I don't know, maybe 25 degrees or something like that. Okay? Because this is where tangent is negative. Likewise, if I do it down here, I will get a tangent that is negative. Okay? If I give you negative 25 degrees here, you're going to have to find the reference angle, so you would have to subtract it from 180 because it's in the second quadrant. If you know that the point was here to begin with, then you know that you should subtract it from 360 because this is 360. All right? So you kind of have to understand where the point is and what the angle should be. If I gave you a point out here, and I said it was negative 4, negative 5, you should understand completely that it's got to be more than 180 degrees, and less than 270 degrees because that's what ends in this quadrant. And if your answer is not between 180 and 270 degrees, you're going to have to add it to 180 because it's a reference angle. All right? Some people find that tricky. I'm just giving that to you now so you understand. We'll talk more about that in just a second. So let's try a couple here. So we want to convert from... Uh rectangular here to polar. Okay, so let's take a look here. So I want to find r. So r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So r squared equals negative 4 squared plus 4 squared. So that's going to be 16 plus 16. Right? Take the square root of that. So the square root of 32, and let's go to three decimal places. So it's about 5.657, all right? So now um, let's do our tangent. Oh, let's take a look here. Negative 4, 4. Let's see where that is. Negative 4, 4. So it's going to be up here somewhere, right? So we should have a negative cosine because it's to the left and a positive sign. All right, so let's do this. So tangent theta equals y over x. So if we do the inverse tangent of that, the inverse tangent of 4 over negative 4 would give us negative 45 degrees. Hmm, negative 45 degrees. So if we take a look at that, why is it negative 45? Well, this is 180, and we know that it's going to be negative here because tangent is negative there. So I want to get to there. So I'm at 180. I need to subtract 45 degrees to get there. So 180 minus 45 degrees 
is going to give me 135. And so our polar coordinates are 5.657 comma negative 45. Oops, excuse me, comma 135. Yowzes. All right, so let's come down here. We want to convert to rectangular. So we're going to do our x will be our 5, our radius, times the cosine of 120. And that gives us about negative 2.5. And our y is going to be 5 sine 120. And that gives us 4.33 zero or something like that. So our po point will be negative 2.5 comma 4.33. We can check it real quick. Let's see. 120 is going to be here and about 5 out from there. So left and up. So that's about right. That should be good. All right. Why don't you pause the video and do these two on your own. All right. So if you take a look, the first thing I did was I jotted down a picture so I knew where negative 8 negative 3 was. I found the radius to be 8.544. Pause the video if you had a mistake and you want to look. Over here, I found the theta to be 20.556. Now, that can't be right because 20.566 would be in the first quadrant, and I know it's over here. So what I had to do is I had to take 180 and add my 20.556, and it got me 200.556, and there is my polar coordinate point. For rectangular... X of 6 cosine negative 45 gave me 4.242. Y of 6 sine negative 45 gave me negative 4.22. And when we looked at it, positive uh, X, negative Y, takes me into this quadrant, the fourth quadrant. And negative 45 degrees would also take me into the fourth quadrant. So that looks good. So something else that people think is cool that really is not skinny jeans. Oh my gosh. Cannot stand skinny jeans. Don't get it. Don't want to get it. Sorry. If it's cool, well, I know I'm not cool, so that's okay. And last but not least, peop, uh, things we think are cool but really aren't. Yeah, these three guys. Mr. Kelly, Mr. Bean, and Mr. Bross, they think they're cool, but they really really are not so sad. All right, so let's take a look at this. We're going to graph this equation by finding and plotting some points. So I'm going to do this. This is going to be 8 times cosine of 30 degrees. Then I'm going to do 8 times cosine of 45. This is old school, right? Then 8 times cosine of 60. All right, down the line. So what I got here was 6.9, then 5.7, uh, then I got 4, then I got 0, then I got negative 4, negative 5.7, negative 6.9, and last but not least, negative 8. All right? And in fact, I want to do 0. When I plug in 0, I would get um, 8. Okay. So let's do this. 0, 8. Let's do that one first. 0, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there's the first point. Awesome. Let's go to the next point, 30 degrees, 6.9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and about 6.9. 45, 5.7, so 45, 5.7 is about here. 60 degrees is at 4, so that's about right there. 90 degrees is at 0. 120 degrees right here, I'm going negative 4, so that's actually going to be at 300 degrees. I would be at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, 135, I go negative 5.7. So that's going to be what? 315, I'm at negative 5.7, somewhere in here. 150 degrees, I go to negative 6.9. So that's negative 150, 330. So that's 5, 6, almost 7. And then at... 180, I'm at negative 8, which is back here. And if you look, now, you cannot connect the dots with polar. It's not a straight line. You kind of have to look and see what we got here. If we draw this carefully, which you know I'm not good at drawing, this actually gives us a circle. 
Pretty cool, all right, pretty cool. So you're gonna do some more of those uh, on this. It's been awesome pre-calc. It's my last video because I know you're not gonna watch a review. We're gonna do some more of this graphing on our calculators in the application and extension part of this. There's, please don't ask your teacher how to graph that using your calculator. I have a great video that shows you how to do it. Please watch that first, all right? If you don't watch that, we're going to know when you ask for help that you haven't watched it. Take two minutes, watch the video, and it's pretty easy, all right? Good luck on the master check and the unit test. Peace out. I'll see you on the flip side.